on whether to discuss the particular uh, measure that's been proposed. And if a measure comes up that's, uh, okay, let's take a very simple issue, and I'll try not to not prolong this too long, but let's take an issue like, okay, more money for the schools for education, okay? Sounds like something all of us would vote for. But let's just say there's something buried in there that also says uh, we've got to, well, we've got to tax to raise the money to do this. uh, We're going to have to start uh, taxing Social Security or cutting Social Security. Well, wait a minute. Now you've got an issue with opposing viewpoints. It's not as clear cut. Study the issues and why people voted for or against them. Do your homework. That's, and well, that's what it's all about. Do I, your homework. I agree with yeah. you a hundred percent. Celebrities, please. You are being paid and adored as celebrities for your singing, your athletic abilities, whatever your talents are. We did not pay to get your political opinions. That's not your job. And speaking out of, of uh, celebrities, we have on the yeah. line a celebrity. Our first guest. Yeah, Our we're going to play. His, we're going to play his music, and uh, yeah, and, and, we're going to do and that. We'll, and we, you know, and and if if he's lucky, we may not ridicule it. I I don't know. And <laughs> if, if the listeners are lucky, we may shut up long enough to talk to. Yeah, him. I think Let's I think we've gone on long Here's... long enough about this nonsense. Here's our first guest of the week, and, uh, and uh, what? oh, there we are. Okay, I had to get my cue cards back up there, and uh, we'll be going to him right after uh, we listen to his, uh, his first song. The gentleman's name is Corey Coons. Hey, what's hey. going on, David Bauer Award Show listeners? Check it out. This is Vincent from Never Wonder on the rated, number one rated show out there. So... Take a listen. Stay tuned. Great stuff coming up. And remember, never wonder. Peace. David, we love you. Uh, You're all right, Vince. Thank you, guys. Uh, Never wondered so much. Previous guest from a couple of weeks ago. Ladies and gentlemen, as we promised, here is Corey M. Coons. This is called Long Road, Dead Man's Dream.
the scenes in the liar's chair. Crazy days of living the used, let me tattered and bruised. Nowhere to land. Long road of sleepless nights, better hold on tight to the steering wheel. Running down a dead man's dream, got me torn at the seams. Got no. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, Corey M. Coons. That's called Long Road, Dead Man's Dream. Going to bring him in right now. This song, or this show, rather, is being recorded on uh, Monday, the 8th of October. So we want to be sure and start off, Corey, by wishing you a happy Canadian Thanksgiving Day. Well, thank you very much, David. How are you guys doing there? Doing just fine, thank you, and so glad to have you here with us. We uh, we tried to uh, put this together, and uh, I knew we'd get you on here sooner or later. Now you are a, uh, a native Canadian, but you have done some uh, you've done some shows down here, some touring down here in the states. Also, uh, I see from a, a bio I was reading that you also did some stuff down in the southeastern United States. Yeah, actually, it's been a long time, but I uh, I did some traveling in the southeast of the U.S. I guess it would have been probably the late 90s, around 98 or so. I traveled for most of that year on and off uh, with a, a cover group at the time who was based out of the Birmingham, Alabama area. Originally, they were from the Ottawa, Ontario area, but they relocated down there. And when I joined the group, they were kind of doing six months uh, in the south and six months sort of thing back up here. But, uh, yeah, I did some touring down there. Um, I didn't get a chance to do any, you know, any of my own material at that point because uh, that was kind of before I got into to being my own solo artist and getting to record most of my own music from, uh, I guess, the early 2000s on sort of thing. But, uh, yeah, I did spend some time in the States for sure. When you get back down this way, keep in mind two places, all right? The Southeast, uh, John Bon Jovial, my illustrious and legendary co-host, is in the Naples, Fort Myers area of Florida, and I'm out Beautiful. in the Tempe area around uh, Phoenix in the uh, Arizona desert. And we'd love to see you if you get out our way, so keep in touch. Absolutely. Uh, one, because would. we'd like to know what's going on and uh, be able to share it with the listeners, and also, too, for very selfish reasons, because we love to... Uh, we love to meet our guests in person. Now you've got uh, you've got an awful lot going on. You got a great sound. First, I want to tell you that up front, uh, just so you know that uh, yeah, you know you're not here just because uh, somebody liked you and told us to have you on the show. You got a great sound, and I, I I just love the driving excitement that's in it. You are releasing, if I've got this right, this show is going to. Uh, debut the first time the weekend of the 14th and you will have some uh, new music coming out the 18th is that correct well in a way yeah we're re-releasing the uh, the first two singles from this record with michael at uh, mts with mts records he's got a great new distribution deal and um so many of his artists actually are, are re-releasing some of their material so to a much wider distribution range so so in a way, it's kind of new, but it's also stuff that just came out off this record earlier this year, too. But there is more new stuff on the way, as well as off this new record. There'll be another single coming up, hopefully, in the next, well, maybe a you know, month or so. If we can get another single released off it, that would be great. So, but why which, you will, uh, always... which, so, which you will uh, get us a copy of so that we can, uh, we can play it for our listeners, of course, right? Yes, definitely. You know, we'll get it out <laughs> with Michael and everything, definitely, for sure, for you guys. Michael's a good man. We've worked with him many times and uh, and had many of his artists on. And he does. He works for his artists, and uh, he's great to work with from our side of the microphone too. So we're looking forward to that, and uh, we're looking forward to uh, to your new music too. And as you said, this music, while it may have been previously released, uh, is going to be new to a lot of people. 
And that's what we hope to do. We hope to get your message and music out to a whole bunch more new people who uh, want to buy your music and see you in person. Now, this is going to be distributed worldwide. Uh, I understand it's also going to be in the Chinese market. Yeah, according to Michael, he's got uh, the Chinese market on board too with uh, with the worldwide distribution. So this is a new a new distributor he's using. So and uh, yeah, we're hoping for some some pretty wide some pretty wide distribution, some pretty good things. Hopefully, will come out of all of this. So we just uh, we take it day by day. But Michael's fantastic to work with. I've been working with him now for over three months or so, and uh, he's been uh, great to work with. So. You were mentioning your uh, your influences, and yes, they they do span some genres. You've got a you've got a nice, solid, modern rock sound, but you can catch little influences like uh, you know you you can see the country influence and everything. And I'm actually going to throw this back to uh, to uh, John because I know that in addition to being uh, kind of technically oriented, he uh, he also has a has a thing about liking to know where your thoughts and music come from, uh, your muses per se. So, John, why don't you go ahead and uh, and delve into that area, because I know that's your, uh, that's your secondary well, really, area of expertise. Well, really, all you really had to do was just say, well, I'm going to disguise my voice and sound like John Bon Jovial and ask this question. <laughs> yeah, I love that. But but but, and, uh, but, uh, but no. then you've been sitting there nodding your head. You sure, know? but no, David is right. I uh, you know I do look at things you know far more from the technical uh, and inspirational point of view, uh, and so I, and I do. I ask almost every guest that comes on. You know, who is your muse or muses, if there is such a word? Uh, as far as developing your musical style and your influences? Well, I think uh, a lot of my musical influences come from, like I said, this, the 70s, 80s melodic rock sound. I mean, it was a very big influence on me. I grew up in high school in the 80s, I mean, listening to a lot of very melodic, radio-oriented rock stuff. So, I mean, if you look at, you know, acts like Bon Jovi as a big influence and, and the very melodic harmonies of somebody like Styx, and then, you know, also later on, kind of getting into more of the, the roots rock element with, like, you know, Tom Petty has been a huge influence on me in the last probably decade or more, and uh, John Mellencamp and stuff like that. And then also country rock like Keith Urban and, and some of that stuff uh, in the early, I guess, when the new millennium kind of hit there, when he kind of came out big, Keith Urban was a good influence on me. And just anything. I mean, even going back to old country music like Johnny Cash or Kenny Rogers when I was a kid, like listening to... You know, country radio station that my mom used to have on here just outside of Ottawa, Ontario. You know, that's probably the first music I was introduced to, but then the first real, like, 45 record I would have listened to in the day would have been the Beach Boys, I think, and, you know, listening to Fun, Fun, Fun and all that amazing harmony stuff, you know, of Brian Wilson and the Beach Boys and all that. It's just total, it's all a big, a big mash of influences on what you're hearing, I think, over the years, because I've been doing this for quite a long time now, so... But, uh, yeah, I think that's kind of, I think I got that all in the scope there, I hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, 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 you did well, most son, you did well. <laughs> they, most artists, when they get into, you know, uh, looking at their music and where it came from, they try to take an objective standpoint. They will notice that uh, there are a lot of influences that play into it. And as you pointed out, everything from... Uh, Everything from uh, John Bon Jovi to uh, John Cash. So, uh, yeah, the the uh, it, it, it's what makes music individual. And as we've discussed in the past, it, I, th- I think as trite as it may sound, I think that's part of what makes music the international language because it is yeah. such an amalgam, it's a compendium of the thoughts and.